Welcome everyone, I hope you're all having a fantastic week and today we are going to be having Corn and Captain Morgan going up against Grand Cathay and Encarnation. Now they're going to be playing on the Cathay Wastelands for a second game of a best of three. So starting here in the front for the Lord choice here for Incarnation, we are going to be having the Dragon-Blooded Lord of Yim. So here on a Great Longmar in the Sky, given that magic damage which is going to be really helpful up against all those demons. We're going to be having Jade Ambulant, Arcane Conduit, and then also the Spells of the Talents of the Night, and then also the Storm of Shadows. So for the front line of Grand Cathay, we are going to be having five units of the Jade Warrior Sword and Shield. These bad boys are actually coming in with a gold chevron, so going to be giving those leadership and melee stat buffs. In the middle pocket, double Jade Warrior crossbows, also a unit of the Grand Cannons in the back, and for the rear, five units of the anti large Peasant Long Spearmen. In the back, we're also going to have one unit of the Heavily Armored Jade Lancers, very good mobile cavalry that can actually deal with Flash Hounds rather consistently. In the middle pocket, we are going to have the double hero, starting here with the Astromancer. He's going to be having the Cloak of Pomi, so when out of melee combat, we're going to get that 60% power recharge rate for all mana. He's also going to be bringing the Mastery of Element Wind, so every extra one you have is going to be giving 15% bonus to your intensity on your magic. So the Alchemist here is also going to be having the Mastery of Element Wind, but then also the Final Transportation and the Plague of Rust. So you can see intensity at 130% thanks to having three of the Mastery of Element Winds. So for the big single entity, we are going to have the Terracotta Sentinel, Unbreakable, 600 Armor Piercing Weapon Strength and 65 Magical Attack. It's going to be absolutely fantastic here up against the big bad demons of Corn. So a super wide, really awesome army coming from Cathay. And I think this is the exact way to play Cathay in land battles, especially up against Corn. So over on the right hand side, we are going to see four units of blood letters in the front line, really fast there for the 38 speed. When you compare them to the Core Knight Warriors, uh, with about 28 speed, yeah, they're going to be a lot faster indeed. In the back, we're going to be having triple exalted blood letters, and the big bad boys today, you can see there's Hellblades being held really high here, looking absolutely fantastic. When they get more than 80 kills, you know, those melee stat buffs is going to be very, very powerful indeed. So for the Lord Choice, going in very, very hard, we are going to be having Scarbrand the Exiled here with the Slaughter and Carnage, Fueled by Rage, as well as the Rage Embodied and the Bellows of Endless Fury. So the big bad boy is uh, certainly one of the best duelists in the game. So for the hero, we are going to have Uhtred of Bebenbo with that ginormous shield there, coming in at silver for 55% block up against all small missiles. Also here with the Gate of Corn, giving him all those blood letter summons. In the trees, hiding on the left hand side, we are going to have the Flesh Hounds, two units, one of them here with the triple silver chevron. So Flesh Hounds super powerful, really good up against Grand Cathay. They can get in the back and really start shutting down most of their key pieces. So the Dragon Blooded Lord is going to be coming forward. Uh, maybe trying to see if we can get a Storm of the Shadows, and then followed perhaps up by some spells, casting maybe on the Exalted Blood Letters, maybe shutting down some of the Blood Letters. Cannon shots here uh, are going to be firing to the front. Slowing down some of these bad boys in the middle will be really good, so you get your crossbows in and really do some good damage before they hit the front line. Scarbrand coming to the left, it looks like here we do have the Flesh Hounds going to the right. We have a spell going down here, which is going to be the Storm of the Shadows. Bit of an interesting one, I don't know if that's a visual glitch, or if that's going to be an actual in-game glitch. We can see only 45% there, I believe, with the intensity buff. It should be higher than that. Yeah, so it should be 58% with the intensity buff. I don't know why that is lower. I think that must be a visual glitch, but either way. We're now going to be getting a Talons of the Night in the back. So it's a really nice combination, but I definitely would have had the Talons in front of the Exalted Blood Letters. As you can see, they pretty much, most of them just walked away from it and you know pretty much got away with free damage there. So that's so the Lord Choice is going to be coming back. Scarbrand moving to the left-hand side of the battle. Very good stuff. He's going to be out of the cone of the Grand Cannons. We can see here that cone is just going to extend out. And they can't reach Scarbrand. So they're going to have to turn and burn. Which means they have to take the focus off the majority of the battle line of the Blood Letters. So in the trees, we are going to have the Thresh Hounds just waiting there. Maybe trying to see if they can get into the back and start compromising some of these Jade crossbows. A little bit slow for me. I like them coming around now. Even if it just kind of engages some of the Jade Lancers. And maybe forces a few units out of position. It kind of, you know, just kind of taxes the micro here of the Grand Cathay player. So, shots in the front going to be firing up against the Blood Letters. And we do have some of the crossbow bolts just being leaved into the Blood Letters. So, they're going to be going down. They've lost about 10% HP already. Not looking too healthy here. Uh, but it's going to be more damage. Flash Hounds coming out now. I'd like to see them getting around the back. You can see gaps really opening up here in the Grand Cathay Force. In the middle, we are going to get a summon. The Blood Letters from the Gate of Corn coming forward here. And they're just going to be spewing through and getting to the back to compromise up against the Grand Cannon crew. 
So Hiroku, the peasant long spearman, charge forward here to hopefully meet up against the blood letters and protect the artillery piece in the back. And there we go, the big anti large peasant long spearman doing the good work here in the back and trying to shut down the blood letters of corn. So over on the right hand side, we are going to have a ginormous fight here of the Jade Lancers and then the Terracotta Sentinel. Looks like we are going to use an ability here with Scarbrand. We're going to be using the Rage Embodied. So when we take a certain amount of damage, we will rampage here with a unit, which means we shouldn't be able to run away. So looks like we are going to be Scarbrand up against the Sentinel. And look at those melee attacks. Cavalry is going to be pulling away. And it's not just going to be a 1v1. And we don't have physical resistance for Scarbrand. However, we have magic damage here, which is going to circumvent that for the Terracotta Sentinel, which is really handy up against these big, large demons. Now, Scarbrand should win this. He's up to 737. Weapon strength with armor pierce, and we should be able to do quite well. We are going to be rampaging the Terracotta Sentinel, but this is going to be a battle of the ages, and it looks like the Terracotta Sentinel is going to be taking the lead here in this battle, and this is going to be a battle of the old ones, and uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be going Grand Cathay's way. For the main battle line, we are going to be seeing Blood Letters chewing through the Jade Wise. Now, they do have brilliant melee defense, and we can see here, compromising in the back, the Exalted Blood Letters, they'll chew through the Jade Warrior crossbows, and then really get those Hellblades nice and quickly. Grand Cannon's going to be firing across the battlefield. The Cultist is in the back, just causing a mock left, right, and center. And we have Hellblades, Blood Letters, you name it, they're absolutely everywhere here in the back. The Alchemist is going to be fighting. And it's on the Ashramans that isn't fighting yet. The Cloak of is still going to be activated, but it looks like that's going to be changing rather soon. But I'm just charging forward here. These ginormous double-handed great weapons coming through. And here we go. He's going to be fighting. He does look absolutely gangster. I must have. Look at that! Just pushing him back. Fantastic stuff. But the Grand Cannon has been broken. It looks like here the Alchemist is going to be fighting. You can see this nice gold aura. That means we are going to be getting the melee buff thanks to the Hellblades. You can see up to 152 kills right now as they're just going to be chewing through Peasant Long Spearmen. In the back, we do break with the Jade Warrior Crossbows, but they will return and they'll fire here into the backside of the Exalted Blood Letters. The Exalted Blood Letters only have 40 armor compared to 30 there for the Blood Letters, but it's not going to be looking too handy. Oh, look at this! Scarbrand is, has managed to pull it back. The Terracotta Center to 1,100 for him. Scarbrand down to 1,500. Two of them just absolutely joining it out, but this is definitely in the advantage of Grand Cathay. It's going to be at 1,600 gold, probably up to something about 2,800 for Scarbrand, something around that region. But 695 up against 700. 180. Who is going to get the victory here? 380 for Scarbrand, 190 for the Sentinel. Scarbrand is going to be wavering. He's not too happy here. One health for the Sentinel. He slashes. 11 HP for Scarbrand. This issue 10 HP in it. And we go down here with the Sentinel. Look at that heroic death. And this man has certainly earned it. Scarbrand is not going to be happy. Bellow of Endless Furies here into the Jade Lancers. One charge here on Scarbrand. And he is done for. Uh, the Relentless Rage is actually going to be giving him breakable, so he's actually not going to be faltering here. But he charges in, looks like he's going to be rampaging, and he immediately dies from one charge of the Jade Lancers. There we go, 360 no scope from these bad boys, and they've been finished off. So the Flash Hounds are going to be fighting with those uh, triple silver chevrons, they'll do brilliant work. Normally triple gold Jade Lancers do quite nicely up against the Flesh Hounds. We're also going to have the Lord Choice kind of backing up here. We do have some Peasant on Spearman, they have been broken, but if they return, that bonus as large will do quite nicely up against the Flesh Hounds. Now they do have physical resistance, that is something to take into consideration, really quite handy up against the Jade Lancers and most of the melee infantry. So Jade Warriors here, so we are going to get a Storm. No, we're not actually going to get Storm, we're going to get a Talons of the Night. The Horn of Corn has been activated, but we're going to be grabbing Blood Letters, two units, maybe even three units, including the Exalted in here. That's going to be a lot of damage in the middle, a really, really nice spell that's really drawn in. Quite a bit of damage here up against Corn. Balance of Power is, as you can see, ticking there into Grand Cathay's favour. So the Exalted Blood, that's just going to be chasing in the back up against the Jade Warriors. They do shatter them. Blood that is going to be charging after Jade Warrior Crossbows. We need these Peasant Long Spearmen. They are going to be getting the Harmony buffs, but they're negative 55 leadership. I don't see these returning at uh, you know any time. So over in the middle, we are actually going to be breaking the Astromatch. So he's been shattered, so he's had enough here. That Cloak of Pomi was certainly not worth it. Uh, for himself. He's uh, going to be costing his life here, unfortunately, today. But uh, the Lord Joyce is going to be flustering out. We do have the double anti large peasant long spearmen and Jade Lancers in the back. And maybe they could rotate here to meet up with the Jade Warrior crossbows, perhaps. There's not really too much here to fight for on the right hand side of the battlefield. That looks to be the case. They're going to be rotating over here. We do see the Exalted Blood Letters, both of them, going to be having those beautiful bonuses. You can see 53 anti infantry armor piercing weapons. Right? That also increases base weapon damage, which just allows them to just shred through most infantry. 
So the third of the Exalted Blood, that's just going to be chasing off here against the j Bory crossbow. So you can see 30 speed for the j Boys would actually outspeed just the regular Core Knight infantry. But uh, Blood Letters, they will get away with it. So the Storm of the Shadow is yet again going to be having that visual glitch. Negative 45% speed. I do wonder if that has an effect. If both of them shouting off the battlefield, do we lose this ability? We do lose it. Very, very interesting. Okay. So if we do shatter with our hero in all choices, the Mastery of Element Winds goes off the battlefield. So you can see we're just down to normal damage now for our spells. So Peasant Long Spearmen are going to be going off the battlefield. Same here with the J-Boron Crossbows. There's not too much room between them and the White Line. The Lord of Choice comes in, but uh, does he really want to fight up against these Hellblades? 53 armor-piercing weapon strength up against the Lord of Choice with only 70 armor. Not looking too great, but this here is definitely going to be very viable. So we are going to be having the Talents of Night here, which is going to be doing some good damage up against the Exalted Blood Letters. Horn of Corn goes down. That's really painful to see, because of course that's going to be so much damage up against the Blood Letters. But actually, with that spell resistance, maybe not too much damage coming in, perhaps. So 25% negation there, which is uh, going to be quite handy. Negative 18 leadership, so they will be crumbling. Horn of Corn, though, is going to be doing the work, giving them that melee attack. So they can really chew through most of that health of the Chunky Lord of Yin. So Jade Lance is coming over to the right-hand side. Do we see a return? Yes, we do see a return. So Peasant Long Spearman and the Jade Warrior Crossbows do return probably about 20 to 30 meters away there from the white line. So in the middle, the Jade Lance is now going to be perhaps coming back. They have actually sacrificed both of their Peasant Long Spearmen here to the Cathay Gods, to the Gods of the Dragons. But now we're going to be charging across three units of Blood Letters coming over. And it's going to be rather an interesting one here towards the end. Give it a little bit of a skip on there, as there's not going to be too much happening. Ah, oh, looks like also going to have Uhtred of Bebenbur, the ultimate leader and champion of all wars and battles. But he's going to be coming across here to help fight, and he'll be giving all those leadership bonuses. So Jay Warriors, it looks like they're going to be shooting here into the Cultist. Definitely want to be shooting into the Blood Letters. He will have a big, ginormous silver shield to hold nice and high as he kind of just struts into the battle. We are going to be breaking and shattering the Jade Warrior crossbows. Also going to be breaking here the Peasant Long Spearman. So the Lord Choice here doesn't really have anywhere else that they can run. We can move in here with the Jade Lancers. Maybe try and see if we can buy ourselves some time for a spell or two. But we need to get in here and start fighting. So a bit of a skip on. Lord Choice does come over the top. Can we engage? Maybe a bit of a hammer and anvil. But the hammer... Or should we say the anvil being the Jade Warriors and the hammer perhaps being the talent of the knight. So if we slam in here, get a couple of units surrounded on us, we can then maybe get a talent. That is exactly the way we're going to be playing that. That's very, very good stuff there coming from Incarnation. And it's going to be some brilliant damage in the pocket. It will shred his Jade Lancers. I think there's no way he can really get back into this. Balance of Power will say it's even if actually Grand Cathay favoured, which is actually hugely surprising to me. Um, but it's very, very interesting. We see the Blood Letters charging forward. The Dragon Blooded Lord is, is rather healthy, I'll give him that, and of course the hero really isn't, but the Horn of Corn, given that melee attack up to 67 with magic and fire damage, and they're pretty much just going to shred through this Lord Choice. So it looks like here we are going to have a Storm of the Shadows, that's actually going to slow the Cultist, but uh, you can see the Lord of Yin, there's just too much armor piercing here in the pocket. So GG's and well played with an absolutely fantastic game here between both of these players. Um, yeah, really, really good game. And this is traditionally quite corn flavored. And you can see, um, it's quite hard to know if you're gonna bring lots of jade crossbows, a little bit of jade crossbows, you know, because it's hard to know, are they gonna go mass uh, berserker jewel weapons or are they gonna be going mass blood letters with, you know, just a big rush with Scarbrand. And that's the way that we played it today here with Captain Morgan. A really, really good game. 1,950 for Scarbrand, and for the Epic Jewel, 2,900 for the Terracotta Sentinel. So we can see there, it definitely favoured the Terracotta Sentinel. It wasn't a good engagement there for Scarbrand. That's the only thing I can kind of say was a weakness there from the game plan of Captain Morgan. This was a fight he didn't want to take, or if he was going to take it, he needed the Cultist nice and close by. So 315 kills. What a tremendous amount of kills. 1.3k, 240 for 1,144 and 265 for 1,355 damage value is just incredible. That is in the region of, what, 800? Yeah, no. Sorry, 650-ish kills. Yeah, 650-ish kills between three units of blood letters is just uh, tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. Uh, so we got uh, 1,570 there for the Cultist of Corn. Uh, 500, 688, 1,100, and 150 there from the Blood Letters. So they got through and did some really good work, and you can see this one rather healthy with 126 kills, 144 as well. Blood Letters just chew through most of the infantry. So we see 880 there for the Flesh Hounds of Corn, and then we also see 140 there for the other Flesh Hounds. So very, very good stuff. And you may say, you know, why are they coming in at rank 7? So if anybody did see my Vigor videos where I talked about how 
uh, vigor and stamina, all these things work here in uh, Total Warhammer. Uh, the silver, the going up to that gold chevron actually gets you a new vigor marker. So basically, it becomes harder to lose vigor over the battle. Uh, there's certain set markers. I think one is double silver chevron and then it's gold chevron and the next one is triple gold chevron so th th there's a couple within there as well so actually getting into certain markers is more valuable than others uh, that's also going to be giving melee buffs and all, all sorts of things that's why you're going to be seeing these with chevrons and it was hopefully going to give them a chance to kind of hold with that high melee defense but the blood letters with anti-infantry armor piercing yeah they're just true to them like knife through butter but 101 kill 2300 from the lord of yin very very good stuff there from incarnation should hold his head very high here between both of those engagements 26 and 98 there for the astromancer 600 for the grand cannon with 250 170 230 540 and 150 there for the jade warriors 1066 for the jade warrior crossbows 280 for the second with 630 for the jade lancers 150 460 with 51, 180, and 220 there for the Peasant Long Spearman. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this one. If you did, please smash that like button. It would really help here on the channel. Feel free to leave a comment down below as well with all your thoughts and opinions of the battle and anything you'd like to see coming forward here on the channel with Total War Warhammer 3 in the future. So otherwise, if you haven't, do feel free to subscribe. It really does help the growth of the channel. And, uh, you know, we'll also put a big smile on my face. So I definitely appreciate that. If you haven't already, do check out that description where you can find all my other social media platforms, including that Twitch and Discord, uh, which I do all sorts of other great, amazing content on. So other than that, I've been your boy Logic. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you all very, very soon.